today we're talking about knitting from a chart. Charts are a great way to visually represent the knitting that you're going to be doing so you can easily keep track of where you are in the pattern and spot if you've made a mistake. How your knitting looks on a chart mirrors how your knitting should look in the pattern. So we can see on this mountain stitch pattern that we have these little mountain peak shapes, these upward arrows. And we can see here in the work that we have these upward arrows. So the way it looks on paper is the way it looks on the actual knitted sample. This chart is from my Ski Lodge Mitt Pattern. You can find this on my website, thefurryknitter.com, and on other pattern websites such as Ravelry and Lovecrafts. Charts can be written for knitting flat or knitting in the round, so we'll take a quick look at both and then we'll work this chart together. If a chart has numbers on both sides, that means it's knit flat. The right side of the chart is the right side of the piece. The left side of the chart means you're working on the wrong side of the piece. So when we are working on the right side of a piece, we are reading the chart from right to left. If we are on a wrong side row and the number is on the left, we are reading the chart from left to right. And that's why our key here will tell us what a symbol means if we're working on the right side or what that symbol means if we're working on the wrong side. This looks a little bit different when you see a chart that's knit in the round. So this is the exact same chart, but how it will be worked knitting in the round. When we're knitting on the round, we're always on the right side. So you'll see all of the numbers are on the right side of the chart and it will always be read from right to left. And in this case, the key only shows one definition for each stitch because we're always working on the right side. There's no need to tell us what to do with that stitch on a wrong side row like this pattern. Something else you may see in a pattern. This is for my Prima Ballerina cowl. Again, we can tell this is all knit in the round because all of the numbers are on the right side and the key only has one definition for each stitch. One extra thing here is the red repeat box. So this whole section is the repeated area for the pattern. So let's go ahead and we'll work this together. You'll notice that the very first row is on the left, so that means that this pattern actually starts on a wrong side row. If we look at our key, a blank box on the wrong side row means purl, a dot on the wrong side row means knit. So we are going to purl three, knit one, purl three, knit one. In my little sample swatch, I have a two stitch garter edge going on here just to make it a little bit cleaner on the border. So I will start with that and then I will work the pattern. I knit Portuguese style. If you're interested in learning this, I do teach Portuguese knitting online. So I'm going to knit two stitches. Now I'm going to start the pattern. I'm going to purl three, knit one, purl three, knit one. One, two, three, knit one, purl three. knit one. 
Now I'm at my edge, so I'm going to do my two knit edge stitches. Now when we look at the work, we can see that the little dot stitch is supposed to line up with the center of the previous peak. So we can take a look at our knitting and sure enough, that little pearl bump lines up with the mountain peak shape. That lets us know that we're doing exactly what we should be. Visually, it looks identical. So that is a nice perk of following a chart. Let's do a right side row together. Since it's a right side row, we're reading the chart from right to left. And we're going to be using the key directions for the right side row. So a blank means a knit and a little dot means a purl. So here we're going to knit one, purl one, knit one, two, three, four, five, purl one. So let's work the two edge stitches, which will be a knit. Knit. Now we're going to start the chart. Knit one, purl one, knit five, purl one. Knit one, purl one, knit one, two, three, four, five, purl one. I'm at the end of my chart and I'm at my border garter stitch. Now, when we take a look at the work, we can see that we are starting to form our next row of peaks building up for the mountain. Let's work row three. Row three is a wrong side. So we're going to follow the wrong side key, purl one, knit one, purl three, knit one, purl two. So we're going to knit our border stitches and then start the pattern. So we have a purl one, knit one, Purl three, knit one, purl two, and then I'm at my border, so I will knit two. And we can see that we are forming our next row of mountain peaks. So we'll finish up row four together. This is on the right side. So we're using our right side directions to knit three, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit two. So I'm going to knit my two edge stitches and then start my row, knit three. Purl one, knit one, purl one, knit two, then I'm at my edge stitches, so I'll knit those. And now let's take a look. So you can see we're forming that next mountain peak. Our next row will put that little center pearl bump above that middle stitch, which is a knit stitch right now. So that is the benefit of knitting from a chart and how simple it can be to knit from a chart. This comes in really handy when you're doing lace work because the way the stitches look here 
represent how it will look in your finished project. So you can see that a big circle is a yarn over, and we know a yarn over will leave a circle mark, a little, a little hole. This little dash is a knit two together, and we know a knit two together is a decrease that leans in this direction. A dot is a purl bump, and we know pearls have a little bump. So this visually tells you what this pattern should look like, where everything should be lining up and stacking up. And that is why I absolutely love working from charts so that I can make sure everything is lining up and I know what it's supposed to look like. So give it a try, knit from a chart. Start with something simple like this and then move on to something a little bit more complex. Test it out and see what you think. Everybody likes to knit a different way. For me, I would rather look at a chart all day long than a whole bunch of knitted directions that I don't really know where I am. If you wanna stay uh, in line with where you are in a pattern using a chart, you can use highlighter tape or washi tape if your chart's big enough, you can put it right over it like that. If the chart is a little bit smaller, like this example here, you can put it underneath the row you're working on or above the row you're working on and know that you're doing this row. This is how I like to work because then as I go up and I work on the next row, I can see how it's supposed to line up with the row below it. And I will see everything I have previously worked on just like I would be seeing in my pattern. This hasn't been worked yet, so I don't really need to see that. I need to see what I have been working on and just move up the row like that. 